Let's see what it looks like in a more realistic setting. We have some binary features, light switches on and off, and we are going to combine them by taking a weighted sum. Now, this, does, this input doesn't have to be binary. Just for our example, we'll use some binary data to keep it simple. So here are our column headings, and our first row just says 100. We take a weighted sum, so our weights are numbers. And 0 times anything is 0, so ignore that. Our weighted sum result is 2. And then we are going to send it through an activation function to add some nonlinearity so that we won't just be able to collapse all the weighted sums down into a single simple weighted sum. So let's use one that we are comfortable and familiar with. How about sigmoid Freud? Sorry, sigmoid Freud. So we'll use a sigmoid activation function. So all we do is we find the two, we put it in, we get 0.9. You don't have to use that activation function. You can go and find your favorite on a long list of them. The most popular one these days that the machine learning hipsters will tell you to use is uh, ReLU, which sounds a little like an alien, I guess. Uh, but actually it's the one that I was describing with the taste test. It's just asking if the output, the weighted sum, is above a particular number, then keep that whole thing, and if it's below that number, then drop the whole thing. Actually, the hipsters probably wouldn't even go for ReLU. There's a whole variety of various activation functions. I think maybe a more hipstery thing would be the hyperbolic tangent or something else. So there's lots to choose from. What are you going to use in the end? whatever is available in the implementation of the algorithm that you are working with. And if there are several options, what are you going to do? Try a few and see how it's going. But wait till there's more. We are going to take more weighted sums, and because we're tired of doing these calculations, we get the point already, we are going to pretend we did them, there you go, and we send them through our activation function as well. And then we do that again in the next layer, more weighted sums, more activation functions, and finally our output, which we then turn into a zero because it's closer to zero than to one. Again, you can all take weighted sums. You can all put a number through a simple function. That was not hard. But when you do this enough times and you stack enough of these operations together, if I ask you to write out the recipe that got you this final thing, well, that can make you dizzy. And if you don't believe me to have real respect for neural networks, I would like you to play a game for homework called Do I Hate Cassie Yet? So here's how it works. For our simple neural network here, and I've even left a few things out, like bias terms and cool stuff like that, just for this simple setting. Write out the recipe in symbols, or you can fill in the values if you want. Write out the recipe that takes you from your benign binary inputs to the final output. What is the actual recipe over here? Not in terms of the operations, but in terms of mathematically with the logs and all that good stuff. Once you've written that out, add another layer with, again, three units in it and see how much more writing it takes to go from this size with two hidden layers to three hidden layers. And you'll notice that your writing has more than doubled. But do we hate Cassie yet? If not, add another layer. And if you don't hate me yet after that, another layer. And another one, and if you get to seven, I'm super impressed. Because at some point you will be like, I have better things to do with my life. This is an annoying long recipe that I have no desire to read or interpret or look at. It consists of simple components, but it ends up being transformations of transformations of transformations. Very hard to read, very hard to write down. So you prefer to think simply in these individual components, but then when you're like, but what is actually going on? Very hard to see it even though each individual little piece is simple. That is why you don't understand neural networks, or rather why the recipe involved in neural networks is so difficult to think about and read and understand. But the operations that get you there, they are not so difficult. And TensorFlow makes you program in terms of these 
graphs and these operations rather than that recipe altogether. Now, why all these transformations? What do they get for you? 